Hey, thanks for checking out this week's video. This is part two of my bullet journal series. I don't really know if it's going to be a series, but there's at least one of the video <laughs> right now. Um, in this video, I'm looking closer at the monthly logs and breaking things down further. If you haven't checked out the first one, I do recommend it. I'm basically just setting up a brand new journal. I'm going over my sort of uh, future log and my goals and collections and things like that. And this is just a continuation of that video. So I got my inspiration for this monthly spread from a YouTuber called Amanda Rach Lee. She does amazing bullet journal spreads. They are so pretty. Mine is nowhere near as good as hers, but definitely check her out if you are looking for inspiration or ideas. She's got some great videos and I'll put a link to her YouTube channel in the description box below. So this month's theme was based off of her November spread that's to do with gems and crystals and things. I just thought it was a really pretty spread and fairly forgiving in terms of the crystals. I felt it would be easy to be quite loose and just have fun with it. So for this month's colour, I'm just keeping it really simple and I'm using one Ecoline brush pen along with an empty water brush pen. I don't actually know the specific term for those. They're just empty brush pens that you can fill with water and use them like that or you can put inks in them or premix watercolors and things like that. In this case I am literally just using the water because the brush pens are water soluble so it means I can put down some ink and then I can soften the edges with it. So I'm just using a combination of those things along with the white Posca pen to add in highlights. Oh, if you're wondering, I put in a bit of tissue paper here just because I wasn't convinced it was 100% dry and I felt like if I was going to go into the next page, it may transfer. Basically, I was too impatient to wait for it to dry, so that's what that is. So now we're on to the monthly spread and this is just basically where you have an overview of the entire month and you can put in your important dates and deadlines and just get a very quick overview of everything. Oh, and there's my cat. You'll be seeing him here and there in this video. <laughs> Complete side note, there's two little page markers that come with this book, but the reason you haven't seen them is because my cat is obsessed. He actually ripped one of my notebooks in half because he was playing with it so much. In fact, I'll insert a picture of it because it's just crazy how much damage he did. I literally went to get a drink of water and I came back and my notebook was nearly in half. So yes, I, <laughs> I haven't got them out until I finished everything and I've tucked them away nice and neatly. So he has not discovered that they are in this bullet journal just yet. And I'm hoping to keep it that way. So back to the spread. As well as the calendar month being written out, you can see it's gone onto two pages. There are some people that just sort of cram it all into one page, but I felt like the boxes looked too small. So I've, I've tried it this way instead and see how I get on. I've also got a few boxes at the sides. The one that I'm sort of doing now is just notes. I figured anything can go in there. <laughs> Basically anything that I've forgotten. I'm thinking possibly like personal things like uh, birthdays and appointments and stuff like that. I could put them in there and then I can put them into the actual monthly calendar too. I've also got one that says growth that's small. That's just a really mini tracker. If you watch part one, you see that I did a yearly tracker of my social media. This is just a way to try and keep track of it from month to month, which then I'll go and fill in the yearly one as and when I can be bothered. Hopefully it will be often. <laughs> And then the other one is for art. Now, the idea of this one I got from Happy D Artist. She keeps track of her paintings this way. She'll basically draw out some rectangles and have the name of the piece she's working on and the size, and then she'll sort of color them in as she progresses until completion. And then she'll also correlate that with the calendar itself. So if she color coordinates the paintings, she'll put them into the calendar where she's gonna sort of start them, do the sketch, maybe the first layer of oils if it is a painting and when she wants it complete by when the deadline is. And then to the right hand side of that art box I have my YouTube checklist I guess because sometimes I forget just how long it takes to create a video. I record the video then I edit it and I do a first render and then I do the voiceover because my computer can't handle all of that raw footage and all those edits and a voiceover it just it really struggles. So I do a render and then I come back I add the voice and then I do a second render <laughs> and then uploads and all that jazz. So it does actually take quite a while 
especially because I have to work around quite a strict schedule. My son is not yet at school, so he does go to nursery. That gets me two hours in a day, term time only. So if I'm like at the moment, I'm only creating art and making this content when he is sleeping. So it's just a way for me to track how long realistically it's gonna take me to make a video so that I can hopefully stick to that two week posting schedule. So now on to my trackers. I see a lot of people doing um, habit trackers and mood trackers and things like that. For mine, you're probably gonna notice a common theme and that's to do with energy. So I haven't mentioned it before on this channel, but I actually suffer from something called ME. It's also known as chronic fatigue syndrome. For those who aren't familiar with the term, it's kind of how it sounds. I'm just tired all the time and it affects memory and concentration and there's also like muscle aches and pains. They don't truly know what causes it and there are no cures. So for the most part, it's just about managing it as best you can. I've had it for about 13 years now, so I feel like I have a fairly good grasp on how to handle it and deal with it. But I've never really tracked my behavior that could affect it. So I just wanted a clear way to see what things I do that very obviously don't work for me and things that I do that do work for me, if that makes sense. So I have some basic things on the list, like trouble sleeping, whether or not I got my eight hours or if I had an early start. And then things that really affect my fatigue or if I go out and do a lot of things, if I'm particularly social or if I exercise, if I'm ill or needed a nap, things like that. Also, I take vitamins to try and help combat the fatigue and other symptoms. So I've put that on there as well as caffeine intake, water and whether or not I ate junk food. At the bottom you'll see I've put like this little tired meter that I colour coordinate. There would be no point in me tracking all these things if I didn't then make an indication of how my energy levels were for that day. So I've just done it really basic. BTG stands for like a bad day, a typical day or a good day. And then below it I've got the sleep tracker. This one's even more simple, it is just tracking how much sleep I got. So I've marked down like an ideal area, which is from like 10 till seven in the morning. So for my ideal sleep, I've actually put as nine hours. Before I started a family, my ideal amount of sleep was 10 hours, but that is like super unrealistic to get 10 hours sleep now. Nine is my ideal, eight is my minimum, personally. I'm interested to see how this turns out. I'm hoping that it will be quite obvious what helps and what doesn't help, just to sort of let me know that I'm on track and I'm sort of doing everything I can, or if there's something very obviously wrong, hopefully it just makes it clearer for me to see what I need to change. Okay, onto something a bit more common that I've seen in a lot of people's bullet journals, and that is an expense tracker. I'll be honest, I've seen other people do it, and I thought, oh, it's a really good idea to track things. But then at the same time, I've got a really strong feeling that I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna try, most certainly I'm gonna try. I'll definitely put in like my budgets and probably write down when all my bills and things are due. But whether or not I'll keep on top of the odd bits and pieces I spend here and there, I don't know. I'll try my best, but I just, I have a feeling that if anything's gonna slip, it's gonna be that. And then right next to it, a very simple ideas and notes page. This is just so I don't end up scribbling down things where I can't fit them. Like in the monthly overview, if I try to squeeze everything into one box, it's probably not gonna work. And again, the following page is then the weekly spread. It breaks it down even further. So I do have bigger boxes, but perhaps I'll come up with an idea for a new painting or something. And I just wanna figure out where my thoughts take me with it. I don't really do much doodling. If I'm gonna do anything like that, I just draw. I didn't think I needed a doodle page or anything like that. Some people call it brain dump. I don't particularly like the term. So that's why I just went with ideas slash notes. <laughs> So now I'm on the last sort of spread before it goes to the next month, and this is the weekly spread. Again, it just breaks things down even further so I can make more detailed lists um, and see what exactly I need to track and things. As you can see, I've got a couple of tiny lists either side. On the left-hand side, it's housework. It's really interesting, I assure you. It's just a clear way for me to see when I have done the necessities, really. I don't change my bed sheets every single week, but it's nice to track when I last did it so I know when I need to do it again. 
and then on the right hand side that is the social media posting tracker that I wanted to keep on top of. So for YouTube it's every two weeks and for Instagram it's every three days. I've also got some space at the top left hand side that says this week. That's just to make a list of things to do that I can then try and squeeze into the week as and when I can. Um, so I'm not having to commit straight away. And then on the top right hand side I've got for next week. I just thought they might be handy. Again, all of this is brand new to me, so I don't know what's gonna be helpful and I don't know what is gonna be annoying to fill in, but I watched a lot of other people's videos and had a good look around on Pinterest, perhaps too long of a look around on Pinterest. Um, and I just took bits and pieces that I thought I could relate to and that I could possibly benefit from. And that about wraps it up for this video, but let me know if you guys want a follow up to this, if you want me to let you know how I'm finding these trackers and the layouts and what works and what doesn't. I know from my previous video in the comments I was talking to someone about commission slots and it gave me a great idea to use that as like a module on one of the spreads. Um, I'm not doing commissions just now, so it's not relevant quite yet, but in the future that's definitely something I'm going to look into. Let me know if you guys use anything like that and what your recommendations are or if there's anything in particular that you use that I haven't that you find really helpful or things that you don't, just let me know. I'd love to hear more about your bullet journals. So until next time, bye!